Hello, I am Simon Kerrins. Five days before Christmas 2019, English football lost another legend. Following a three-year battle with Alzheimer's disease, Martin Peters sadly passed away. I have produced this tribute to him and hope that you like it. With a twinkle in our eye, West Ham United fans like me often say, in semi-jest, but it was our club that actually won the 1966 World Cup. The England side was obviously captained to glory by Bobby Moore, and Jeff Hurst netted a hat-trick as we defeated West Germany 4-2. However, Martin Peters was the other scorer on that famous day, and the importance of his goal cannot be overstated. Indeed, had the Germans not equalised after his strike put England 2-1 up, that would have almost certainly been the final score. There would have been no extra time, and certainly no Hurst hat-trick. Moreover, Peters would almost certainly have received much more in the way of adulation than was actually the case. Like beauty, opinion is in the eye of the beholder, and I have always felt that, if Moore and Hurst were to England what Lennon and McCartney were to the Beatles, then Peters was something of a hybrid of George Harrison and Ringo Starr. Born in 1943 in Plasto, in the heart of both London's East End and West Ham's catchment area, Martin Peters was a quiet, private man who lived for football and, even more so, his family. When he was seven, his family made the relatively short move to Dagenham, and he attended the local Fanshawe school. His footballing talents were already on show, but, due to his height, he was invariably asked to play in goal. In 1959, at the age of 15, and having been scouted by the famous West Ham scout Wally St-Pierre, he joined the Hammers as an apprentice. Over the next 20 or so years, Martin Peters would make an everlasting impression on English and indeed world football. Between 1959 and 1970, he would play 302 times for West Ham, and score 81 goals. After leaving the Hammers, he moved on to Tottenham Hotspur, Norwich City, and Sheffield United, with whom he had a short spell as manager. However, his finest hour came at Wembley Stadium on Saturday the 30th of July 1966, the day of that World Cup final. Then aged 22, Peters had only broken into the England squad shortly before the finals. Manager Alf Ramsey, later of course Sir Alf, had left him out of the opening match, an uninspiring goalless draw against Uruguay. However, Peters was given a place in the starting lineup for the second match against Mexico and never looked back. It is no coincidence that England did not look back either. Much to his embarrassment that he was an extremely modest man, Martin Peters was described by Alf Ramsey as being ten years ahead of his time. Tall, energetic and technically gifted, he was known as the Ghost for his unique ability to evade markers and find space. To do so required great timing and sadly the only untimely thing about Martin Peters is his passing. It is, of course, very easy to wax lyrical on someone's passing, call them a legend, and stop in many ways just short of canonisation. However, Martin Peters was, in his own quiet way, a true footballing great and, by all accounts, a delightful human being. He was devoted to his wife Cathy, daughter Leanne and son Grant. Until just a few years ago, when Alzheimer's took a cruel grip of him, he was a matchday regular in the corporate hospitality suites at both West Ham and Spurs. He always made time for people, loved to chat, and was happy to sign autographs. It is a fact of life that, over time, the surviving members of a legendary team from the 1960s will grow fewer in number. We have, of course, already lost several members of that World Cup winning side, including Bobby Moore, who incredibly died back in 1993. With the passing of Martin Peters, 
Only Sir Jeff Hurst remains of the fabled West Ham Holy Trinity of Moore, Hurst and Peters. Memories, however, remain in abundance, and the hope is that they will bring some comfort and consolation to those who loved him, family, friends and fans alike, at this sad time. Rest in peace, Martin Peters.